Frank Sinatra and those kind of people. Keith, to me, is in that kind of category. That is, he went by, listened to his music, and said, you know, that's exactly who I want to be like. How did Keith Whitley really die? I mean, you might think you know the answer, but do you really? Do you know the story? What's happening? We're here to take you on a ride through the short, insane life of Keith Whitley. I mean, here's a guy who only released two albums during his entire lifetime, but that was all it took to make him a legend. So, how did the guy behind the classic songs like Don't Close Your Eyes, Don't Close Your Eyes, and Miami, My Amy, fall so far and so hard? We'll find out all this and much more. What did Waylon Jennings have to say about Keith? Why the heck isn't Keith Whitley in the Country Music Hall of Fame? Do you think he should be? Well, get down below and tell us. We sure hope you enjoy the ride, as we spend a lot of time researching, writing, editing, and voicing these videos to make sure it's awesome. So sit back, relax, and let's listen to some Keith. What, what happened? happened? So Keith, our favorite two-hit wonder, almost kicked the bucket before he even got anywhere close to a Nashville recording studio. I'm talking about a teenager in Kentucky. He seemed to have a death wish. He spent his time drinking bootleg bourbon and racing cars down mountain roads. And I'm not talking about the type of racing I did in high school, when me and the guys drove our Honda Civics around the Arby's parking lot. Heck no, Keith's racing was much more real, and real deadly. One time he was in a car that tried to make a turn at 120 miles an hour, which to be honest, sounds literally and physically impossible. The car wrecked, and Keith's friend in the car died. Another time he drove off a 120 foot cliff and landed, well, just in a frozen river. What was the guy thinking? I'm not sure much. Next up, his brother died in a motorcycle accident. I mean, I'm not sure Keith really wanted to survive his teenage years. You know, going out in a blaze of glory sounds pretty cool when you're young and dumb. And a lot of us feel like we want to die in high school, but yeesh. But finally, Keith Whitley came to a realization. If he kept going the way he was going, he wouldn't live to see adulthood. And deep, deep down, he had a lot more to give to the world than drinking and racing. Keith had a voice of pure gold, and it was clear it could take him somewhere. So next up, he actually became friends with Ricky Skaggs at a music contest, and at 16 years old, they both joined the band of Ralph Stanley, a legendary bluegrass player. No matter what I say or do. Now, it wasn't long until Keith was pretty famous as one of the best bluegrass singers in the country. But that wasn't just enough for him, because as much as he loved bluegrass, Keith loved country music even more. So he packed up his bluegrass and he went, where else too, but Nashville. At the top of his game. Believe it or not, Keith's first stab at country music did not exactly blow people away. Nope, their socks stayed on. People actually said his first record, it was a hard act to follow, was quote unquote too country. And yeah, I don't see how that's bad. Can you imagine if people said Led Zeppelin was too rock and roll? But however bizarre that criticism was, Keith took it in and he improved. His next record, his first studio album, L.A. to Miami, put the haters in their place. Miami, My Amy was the huge hit from that one, so let's listen. What took you so long, I thought you never And the last three singles, Don't Close Your Eyes, When You Say Nothing At All. There's a truth in your eyes, say I'm No Stranger to the Rain went number one. I'm no stranger to rain. 
seriously, if you haven't heard this album, what are you doing? Get it, listen to it, find it. The very next year, he kinda topped himself again with I Wonder Do You Think Of Me. I wonder, do you think of me? And it was done. These two albums, Incredible Country Records, alone made Keith a legend. But they would be the only ones officially released during his lifetime. So, how did Keith star, one of the brightest in country music, burn out so quickly? Well, there is the contradiction with Keith. While his music, his tunes, his voice, was some of the most tender and romantic stuff this side of Shakespeare. Well, his real life, the real Keith, late at night, well, that was much more dark. And that takes us to Lori Morgan. So let's get this straight. I'm sure we all agree Keith Whitley was really, really good at music. But there was one thing he was actually even better at, more practiced in. And that, sadly, was drinking. In fact, Keith Whitley was one of the most determined drinkers in country music history. If he couldn't get his hands on hard booze, he'd go for beer. And if he couldn't find beer, well, he'd even drink Listerine. The guy was out of control, let's face it. But then, Keith met somebody at the Grand Ole Opry who would turn his whole life around. Fellow singer Lori Morgan. Lori, of course, would go on to become a huge star herself with some great songs like Five Minutes. Now you got five minutes. And what part of no? So what part of no don't you understand? But even back then, in 1986, she was very much up and coming. Okay, so she wasn't exactly a model of healthy living either. I mean, we're talking about the woman who once said, drama is something that lets you know you're still alive. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had it before he's you just, got married. No, he's right? just trying to think how many we have. Yeah, I'm just trying to... One second, I'm going to write that down for personal use. When they tied the knot, it seemed like a step in the right direction, you know. They got married in 1986, and by 1987, they had a son together. Keith even adopted her daughter from a previous marriage. So, kids, a blended family, a white picket fence, the whole deal. And to her credit, Lori did her best to bring Keith down to earth. In fact, she was just about as dedicated to preventing Keith from drinking as Keith was dedicated to, well, drinking. Lori would have to tie his legs to hers at night and then walk him to the bathroom to make sure he didn't gulp down the mouthwash. Gosh, man, it's just, it's very sad. But on the other hand, like I said, Lori also had her own problems. And try as she could and tie as she could, she just couldn't get through to Keith. You would actually be okay for a few months, but then for almost no reason at all, he'd go right back to the bottle and hit it hard. And that tragic fact takes us to the final chapter of Keith Whitley. How did Keith Whitley actually die? So the great Keith Whitley, his final day was a fairly normal one. Unfortunately, Lori was away in Alaska on a promo tour. Keith spoke to his mom in the morning, then hung out with his brother for a bit. They had coffee, and then Keith's brother took off. He actually planned to come back later so they could have lunch and play golf, but they never got to that. When his brother returned, Keith was found dead, surrounded by 23 empty cans of Budweiser at his house, an empty bottle of Scope, and four half-consumed bottles of hairspray. He was wild, he was drunk, he was doing coke. Nobody was there to save him. His blood alcohol content was 0.47. Keith wasn't even 47. Whitley was just 34 years old. It seemed it was another tragic case of a lifelong alcoholic falling victim to his own addiction. Or was it? Because ever since that fateful day, there have been those who cast doubt on that official story. 
And if you want to poke holes, it's not that hard. Just take a look at the guy who wrote Keith's autopsy. Years later, he had his medical license revoked after 20 counts of misconduct. And authorities found that many of his reports were actually false, including several accidents that were ruled as murders and murders that were ruled as accidents. To this day, many Keith Whitley diehard fans believe there is something fishy about Keith's death. And personally, I can understand why. But sadly, and to be honest, I don't think we'll ever know. Most of the people who would know anything aren't any longer with us, including Lori Morgan. But one thing is still up in the air, and that is Keith Whitley's legacy. Why isn't Keith Whitley in the Country Music Hall of Fame? So I think Keith is such a legend that many people forget he's not in the Country Music Hall of Fame. So what gives? Does somebody on the inside have a grudge against Keith? Or does he not belong there? Let's take a look. You can make a lot of arguments saying that Keith deserves to be in that Hall of Fame. The Grand Ole Opry gave him the rare honor of inducting him after he passed. He was actually already scheduled to perform and be invited to join and then he died. Okay, so Grand Ole Opry, check. What about some country legends? Let's hear from Waylon Jennings. Now Waylon actually went a bit further than that. According to a former bandmate, the day Keith died, Waylon said, quote, Hoss, that was the greatest country singer ever. Yeah, some high praise from the great Waylon Jennings. But for some reason, the Hall of Fame does not agree. And at first glance, I will say it makes a bit of sense. It's a pretty exclusive club, right? But then you think about it. Guys like Ray Charles and Jimmy Dean are in there. And they have less country number ones than Keith. I mean, Ray spent most of his career inventing soul music. He only put out a few legendary country songs. And look, I do think both of those guys do belong in the Hall of Fame as much as peanut butter belongs with jelly. Yum. But if they're in there, why isn't Keith Whitley? So one argument that people make is that Keith had a relatively short career. And yeah, that's true. His two albums don't exactly give you an insane amount of material to work with. But then, isn't it all that much more impressive that Keith was able to become a legend in such a short time? For now, there's nothing we can do to get Keith his rightful spot. Trust me, the Hall of Fame stopped answering my letters after number 10,000. And sadly, they don't really do posthumous inductions. Although, Toby Keith was inducted after his tragic death very recently. But he was already voted in before that. So, how do we swallow this news? Well, I think country music isn't really about the trophies and the honors at all. And I think that's what Keith would have believed too. But it doesn't stop you from thinking, what if? What if Keith Whitley had survived? Put out album number three, number four. How many more country number one hits would we have received? You always gotta wonder about the guys who leave us too soon. Just think about everybody in that 27 club. Could they have come up with stuff that was even better? Or was their greatest just a flash in the pan? Unfortunately with Keith, we'll never know for sure. I guess we should just count ourselves lucky that we got what we got. Alright, so now it's up for discussion. What's your favorite song by Keith Whitley? My favorite track is kind of a deep cut, I think. It's Brotherly Love. While you were laughing at me, but I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Sure, his love songs really get your heart beating, but I also love that Keith could tackle a less popular topic and still make a heartbreaking tune out of it. So please get down below and tell me your favorite Keith Whitley track. Did anyone get to see him perform live during his short career? And is there any country artist today that reminds you of Keith? If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up icon. It really helps a ton. Subscribe to our channel and hey, come back often so we can keep telling you
What, what happened? happened?